Howdy, y'all. Welcome back. It's the uh, weekly wrap-up for August 13th, 2021. It's Friday the 13th. Ah! Kill, 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 kill. Ah, ah, ah. Anyways, hope everyone has had a fantastic week and uh, pretty nice here in Colorado this week. I had a pretty busy week. Had uh, vet appointments for my pups and I had an infusion for myself. So I'm all refilled for, uh, for another six weeks for my arthritis. So let's go ahead and uh, jump into the news. All right. The, the first bit of news I want to talk about uh, for the end of the week is the uh, $3.5 trillion budget resolution that they're trying to push through. And um, this is from the third or I'm sorry, the August 11th. So it's a couple days old, but I did want to go through what uh, some of the big costs were that uh, we're going to have to wind up paying for if the Republic uh, <laughs> lasts for a few more years. All right, so uh, let's hit some of these big points. Uh, education, $726 billion for pre-K for three- and four-year-olds and child care for working families. Uh, I, I've read through the Constitution multiple times. I don't ever remember seeing anything about uh, education in there, so could be wrong. I might have to reread it again. Uh, immigration, $107 billion uh, f- towards lawful permanent status for qualified immigrants and border security measures. <clears throat> well, easy way to fix immigration is to get rid of welfare. That will pretty much solve that. Healthcare, again, something else not in the Constitution. A uh, billion dollars. Wow, that's nice. Agriculture, $135 billion towards uh, agriculture conservation, drought and forestry programs to reduce carbon emissions and prevent wildfires. Hmm. Well, probably should have started that already in California. I mean, I've been breathing nasty smoke for weeks over here in Colorado because uh, the jackasses in California can't seem to put out a fire. All right. Uh, $332 billion is going to go to housing. Uh, it's a hor- <coughs> housing and affordability rental assistance Home ownership incentives, uh, revitalization projects, zoning, transit improvements, and public housing improvements. Terrific. Again, it's not part of the federal government's purview. Clean energy, $198 billion towards clean elect- uh, electricity payment program. I'm not sure what that is. Financing for domestic manufacturing of clean energy and auto supply chain technologies. Federal co- uh, procurement of energy efficient materials and climate research. Yeah, we'll get to that in a minute. Climate initiatives, $67 billion. Homeland Security, $37 billion. Investments in Native communities, $20 billion. Okay. Uh, small businesses, they get $25 billion. And veterans get $18 billion towards upgrading VA facilities. How nice. Wow, that's a, that's a whole lot of crap that uh, probably we shouldn't be doing at all. But no one asks me. All right. And then the other big story uh, this week, uh, this isn't necessarily financial, but it has an effect on our our pocketbooks. Uh, Humans have pushed the climate into unprecedented territory. Landmark UN report finds (laughs) we're all going to die. Okay. Uh, basically, this is the report that came out from the International Panel on Climate Change. I think it was the IPCC report is what I kept hearing in the news. Um, I'm not going to go through all this. It basically talks about a calamity and fires, floods, blah, blah, blah. You know, the world's going to end. Slow your roll, science people, because I've got this article here from uh, two years ago. <laughs> And uh, it goes through all the lies of our client researchers over the last, I don't know, 50 years. Uh, This one starts back in 1967. Dire famine by 1975. Well, that didn't happen. Uh, What's the next one? Uh, Everyone will disappear in a cloud of blue steam by 1989. The foe of pollution sees lack of time. Well, it's uh, I remember 1989. We didn't die. 1970, an ice age by 2000. Whew. Well, that was 21 years ago. Where's that ice age? Yeah, I'll attach this uh, along with the Washington Post article about the doomsday <laughs> that we're coming towards. So, uh, yeah, it's a load of bullshit. So it's just a reason to force people to buy electric cars and all of the, the green crap that they want us to purchase. Uh, you know, trees love carbon. I hate to tell you that uh, carbon dioxide is actually what they uh, live on. 
All right. Well, let's go ahead and move over to financial news. Uh, there were a couple things here that uh, I wanted to touch on before getting into uh, the indexes for the week. U.S. Uh, consumer morale falls. Uh, the University of Michigan's consumer sentiment for the U.S. slumped to 70.2 in August, the lowest since December of 2011, and well below market expectations of 81.2. Wow, that's a pretty big gap. 81 to 70, uh, with widespread losses uh, across income, age, and education subgroups and across all regions following pande the pandemic's resurgence due to the Delta variant. Yeah, I'm not worried about the Delta variant. Um, moreover, the declines covered all aspects of the economy from personal finances to the prospects of the, of the economy, including inflation and unemployment. So that's bad. Uh also here, corn prices, let me go back, read the headline. Corn prices rise as USDA reduces supply forecast. Uh, Chicago's corn futures rose to $5.73 a bushel for the first time since July 12th after the government slashed its outlook for domestic corn production by 2.7% due to dry soils in we key western growing regions. At the time, the USDA trimmed demand productions, uh, projections Dwindling prospects for Brazil's second corn crop after drought and frost were helping uh, underpin prices. So, as you can see, corn prices have been dropping the last few months uh, since its peak back in, uh, looks like May. Um, you know, so this is the first time that they've uh, started to climb. Let's go ahead and take a look back over the last <clears throat> 25 years. Uh, we've had higher corn prices, uh, what was that, 2012, and then again in back in 2008. So, I, you know, I'd like to see it come back down to, you know, it's mean where it's been the last, uh, you know, several years, but, you know, it's certainly progress. So, all right, were there any other articles on that page? Uh, dollar hits one week low, uh, it's still above 90, so I'm not terribly worried at the moment. All right, well, let's go ahead and, uh, before we get into the jobless numbers, let's go ahead and take a look at the market this week. And let's see how it did. All right. So the Dow Jones this week uh, looks like it was up about 0.88%. So not too bad there. The S&P 500 this week, uh, ooh, up 0.76. And the NASDAQ, ooh, it looks pretty Fairly flat for the week, up 0.22. Dow Utilities, they're up 1.18%. And the Dow Transports, up uh, three, ooh, wow, 3%. So good week for transports. So it uh, looks like as far as the week, uh, everything, you know, as far as U.S. indexes look fairly strong. The uh, I guess the laggard would be the NASDAQ, uh, probably the one that's the most flat for the week. So all in all, not too bad. Uh, let's jump over to jobless claims. Uh, jobless claims came in at 375,000 against a forecast of 375,000. So, wow, somebody should get a gold star for that. All right. So the previous weeks uh, was 385 last week and they revised it up to 387. So basically stayed the same. It still was a little bit over forecast last week. Let's look at continuing jobless claims. They came in at 2,866,000 versus a forecast of 2,880,000. So slightly better than forecast. Last week's numbers uh, were, they came in at 2,930,000 and were revised up to 2,980,000. But still that was against a forecast of 3.26 million. So still uh, significantly better than the forecast and uh, you know, that trend line does continue to uh, look like it's heading in a net downward direction, which is certainly very good. All right. Uh, you know, we do talk a lot. Uh, I've spent a lot of time talking about inflation. It seems to be what's on the news quite a bit. Um, core CPI uh, this month, the, the report came out on Wednesday. Uh, we had an actual 4.3 against the, the same forecast. Um, let's look at last month's numbers. We, they came in at 4.5 and they didn't change. There was no revision change there. And let's look at the CPI. Uh, 
the total CPI is up 5.4 against the forecast of 5.3. So it stayed the same as last month at 5.4. So, I mean, that's, you know, that the inflation is pretty bad. I, I mean, I'm not going to try and sugarcoat that. Uh, let's stretch this out and take a look back uh, over the last 40 or 50 years. Um, this is probably the highest inflation we've had since, when was this? Uh, 8 of 2008. And when was this? Uh, looks like February of 91. I was a junior in high school back then. So, uh, so this is the worst, uh, the worst uh, inflation we've seen in, in quite some time. So certainly not, you know, 1980 or 1974. 74 was a good year. It's the year I was born. Um, but, uh, you know, it comparatively from what we've experienced the last, you know, 20 or 30 years, you know, inflation that reaches up to, you know, to the 5% level uh, ha has really been uh, an anomaly over the last uh, few decades. So let's hope that it starts to pull back. But again, with all the dollar creation that's gone on the last, you know, year plus, I'm not holding my breath. All right. And what was the last one I was going to show here? Oh, uh, you know, we all people keep complaining about uh, the prices of gas. Um, you know, and this is to me is really the big reason uh, the rig count. You know, we're at 397 rigs uh, currently oil rigs currently in use. Uh, that's an increase from I mean, if we go back to, say, the beginning of the year, we were at, you know, 275, you know, and now we're you know, just under 400, um, you know, I mean, but looking back here, you know, to before all this started, I mean, we were at, you know, 800 rigs, you know, 700 rigs. So, I mean, we're still running at half capacity. So as those rigs continue to come back online, I imagine that the, uh, you know, the price squeeze on uh, oil and gas is going to come back down. So we'll see, um, you know, that's my prediction as far as uh, what, what I would, you know, guesstimate would happen over the next uh, say 12 to 18 months but uh you know time will tell you know who knows what the hell's going to happen uh you know three months from now so we'll see so all in all not a uh terrible week in the markets and uh that's everything that I had for everybody. So if anyone needs anything from me uh feel free to reach out email call me smoke signals um <laughs> So uh, please like, share, and uh, subscribe, you know, and share this with a friend or family member. I would certainly appreciate it. And uh, I'll be back on Monday with the uh, weekly update. Have a great weekend, guys. Bye.